Hi guys, back again. Um, wasn't real convinced that the magnets were going to hold, so I've just done a few little minor modifications. I replaced those, which have got like a domed head, with flatter head, and they are countersunk now and sit further into the magnet, which makes sure that the magnet um, connects with the flat washer side that's mounted on the bike but I'm going to try something else there's three of these I think I pointed out to you last time that's what they are they are magnetic latches they have a holding strength of 13.5 kilograms now I don't know where I read that but somewhere on here it said 13.5 kilogram holding strength so I'm going to do some physics we're going to do some aerodynamic calculations, work out what sort of force is on this, and go from there. So, that's what you see from the front, and that's what wind pressure is against. It's against that face as it comes to you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few calculations. We're going to measure the actual surface area of this. Now, it's the projected surface area, which is effectively that because that's the shadow that that casts if you to look at it front on so it's not the total surface area it's the projected area so we're going to work out that we're going to do some assumptions on coefficient of drag and we'll just work out how much this really needs to hold it on in regard to magnet magnetic force so first step is we're going to measure this and we'll get some measurements and i'll come back to you in a second Right, it's the easiest way to do this. I'm just going to get some little basic measurements. So, I don't know if you can see that. That's about 150 millimetres at the widest point. Roughly 145 to the highest point there. And obviously it's not rectangular. It's some sort of a four-sided, five-sided shape. But we're going to do some estimates based on triangles and squares and so that's roughly about 145 across there and then the rest is a triangle maybe we'll do some calculations and i'll show you how to do the aerodynamic calculations as well how good is this going to be who knows we'll make some assumptions we'll go from there so this is the basic shape it's the outline of the mirror as i recorded it before and the side height was 45 millimeters the length or width was 150 millimetres. The total height was 145, so that gives us 100 millimetres in that top triangle. Now if we do some fairly simple arithmetic, the area of the top triangle is just a half of the base times the height. I've converted these to meters so that our answer is in square meters so it's 0.1 meter times 0.15 of a meter half of that gives you 0 0.0075 square meters for that top triangle shape the area for the bottom is just a simple calculation 0 0.045 meters times 150 millimeters or 0.15 meter width that gives you a total area of 0 0.006 and when you add all of that together the total area is 0 0.014 square meters so now our equation for force from the aerodynamics is a half rho v squared coefficient of drag times the area. Now rho is 1.2 in air, it's the density of air, 1.2 kilograms per cubic metre. So we put that in. I'm assuming 200 kilometres per hour, it's worst case scenario, which is 55 metres per second. Our coefficient of drag I've taken as 0.5. There's a whole heap of charts you can look up, but a typical cone is about 0.5 and that's sort of the shape we've got. 
multiplied by the area. And remember that should be um, in square meters, so that's all correct. And that gives us a total force of about 13 Newtons in total. But what's the force holding it on? Well, that's calculated from the magnetic force. So we'll work out the magnetic force now of the three magnets. Each magnet has supposedly a lifting capacity of 13.5 kilograms. Now I need to change that into Newtons. So that's 13.5 kilograms times acceleration, 9.8. That should be meters per second squared. I left off the little square, but you know what I'm talking about. That gives 132 Newtons for each magnet, but that for all three gives us 396 Newtons, which is significantly more than the aerodynamic drag of 13 Newtons. So I'm working on the theory here that we do have sufficient holding force to resist that drag force from the aerodynamics. Well, I couldn't leave you with all the calculations without giving you another shot of the bike. How accurate were those calculations? Well, they're probably in the right order of magnitude. Um, you can see here, even the projected area that I used was grossly overestimated because there's that red fairing that provides quite a bit of wind deflection and protection. So even the calculation I used, um, it's probably going to be much less and I hope you picked up that I did make a mistake in the calculations, but the arithmetic was right, but what I wrote down was wrong. I had an extra zero in that area, 0 0.014 square metres. Now, is that all the forces acting on this? No, there's going to be acceleration and deceleration forces as the bike um, probably hits potholes would be the biggest one. Um, so if I hit a pothole... It's going to um, be absorbed in somewhat the, the suspension, but there's still going to be forces up through the rest of the bike. So that's not all there is. Am I confident in the numbers I did? Yes, I am, but there's probably forces I haven't considered. So it'll be a little bit of a still trial and error. Um, but it was a bit of fun doing some numbers and... We'll get back to the bike in the next episode. We've got those brakes to try and work on and get this ready for Rego. But I just thought it was a bit of fun. I just wanted to have a bit of a play with the physics and just see where we got to. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope I didn't bore you with the number crunching. And see you next time. Thanks.